All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the equation seven to the power of x is equal to 70. So before we start on our solution, let's notice that this is an exponential equation and x is an exponent, which is the variable we're solving for. So let's just try to plug in a number. Let's start with one. So we have seven to the power of one, and this is equal to seven. Now, let's go one higher. Let's go seven to the power of two. This is equal to 49. And now let's go one higher. Let's go seven to the power of three. This is equal to 349. So notice how we're trying to find what value of x to, that we should take the power of seven to equal 70 but even the number three is much results in a number much higher than 70 meaning the value of x is going to be a decimal somewhere in between two and three so now to actually solve for x my equation is seven to the power of x is equal to 70 and what i'm first going to do and what i recommend doing for any exponential equation such as this is taking the log on both sides. And the reason that you should do this is because now you can use the property log a to the power of b. I can move the speed to the front so I get b times log a. Log a to the power of b is equal to b times log a. And the reason this property is so useful is because before x was an exponent and it's really hard to solve for x in its previous state but now i can move x to the front and it's going to be an actual term so now i get x times log 7 is equal to log 70. now log 70 is the same thing as log of 7 times 10. And another property of logarithms is that if I have something in form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So log of 7 times 10 is going to equal log of 7 plus log of 10. So now from here, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by log 7 because we obviously want to isolate x so the only way to do that is to get rid of this log 7. So then these two cancel out and I get x is equal to log 7 plus log 10 over log 7 and I can rewrite this as log 7 over log 7 plus log 10 over log 7. Now log 7 and log 7 cancel out, so I get x is equal to 1 plus log 10 over log 7. And if you guys already didn't know, log 10 is actually equal to 1. So now I get x is equal to 1 plus 1 over log 7. And this is my answer. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is equal to three. So as you guys probably already know, pi is an irrational number, meaning it doesn't have a whole number value and it's actually equal to 3.14159 and on and on so forth forever. So that's why it's an irrational number. It's to just don't stop going. So in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is actually equal to three and not the irrational number that we all know it is. So what I'm first gonna do is start with the statement x is equal to pi plus three over two. So all I'm doing is I'm giving 
a value to a variable, which is completely illegal, which is completely legal. So now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2. So I get 2 times x is equal to pi plus 3 over 2 times 2. Now, 2 times x is equal to 2x. So I get 2x is equal to, these two 2s cancel out, pi plus 3. So I get 2x is equal to pi plus 3. And now, from here, I'm going to multiply both sides by pi minus 3. So I have pi minus 3 times 2x is equal to pi plus 3 times pi minus 3. Now, pi plus 3 times pi minus 3, I'm going to distribute the pi so I get pi squared plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, which they just simply cancel out, plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, these two cancel out. And then I have minus 9 at the end. So this is, I can just say this is pi squared minus 9. And for my left-hand side, I can distribute the 2x. So I get 2x pi minus 6x. And now from here, I'm going to add x squared on both sides. So I have x squared plus 2x pi minus 6x is equal to pi squared minus 9 plus x squared. And let me just reorder this real quick. I'm going to write this as x squared minus 6x plus 9. So I'm going to add 9 on both sides. Is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x, so I'm going to subtract 2 pi x on both sides. And at the end, plus pi squared. So I have x squared minus 6 x plus 9 is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared. And now, x squared minus 6 x plus 9, this factors out into x minus 3 squared. And x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared is the same thing as x minus pi squared. So I have x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus pi squared. And now I want to cancel these two squares, so I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So now the square root of x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus 3. And the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus pi. So I get x minus 3 is equal to x minus pi. So now I'm going to cancel these two x's out by subtracting x on both sides. So now I get negative 3 is equal to negative pi. And now if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get pi is equal to 3. So there you have it. I just proved that pi is equal to 3. So now where did I go wrong? Because obviously we know that pi is not equal to 3. So where did I go wrong? Well, I actually went wrong on this step right here, where I said that the square root of x minus 3 squared and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus 3 and x minus pi, respectively. Well, this is actually not true. The square root of x minus 3 squared isn't equal to x minus 3, it's equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. And same goes with the square root of x minus pi squared. It's not equal to x minus pi, it's equal to the absolute value of x minus pi. So the reason this is so important is because now I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi. Or also negative x minus 3 is equal to positive x minus pi, since we're taking the absolute value of these two. So, if we want to solve x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi, we're going to have to first distribute the negative sign. So I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x plus pi. So now if I add x on both sides, 
these two cancel out. So I get 2x is equal to 3 plus pi. And x is equal to 3 plus pi over 2, which going back is what we started with. So there you have it. That is something really important to know that the absolute value is, or sorry, the square root of a square isn't just the normal version, it's the absolute value of that.